Good evening and welcome to the municipality of Monroeville's regular council meeting for July 9th, 2019. Would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. <coughs> Roll call, please. Mayor Greesock. Here. Mrs. Gatos. Here. Mr. Poach. Here. Mr. Harvey. Here. Mr. Johns. Mr. Arasenko. Here. Mr. Duncan. Here. Mr. Wilson. Here. Mr. Little. Here. Mr. Ratcher. Here. Ms. Rock. Here. Mr. Hugis. Here. Mr. Sedlak. Here. Mr. Weldon. Here. Council, we're going to open up with a presentation from the Monroeville Volunteer Fire Department Chiefs. Are the Chiefs here? No, just one. Just, Chase. just one. One Chief is here. <laughs> That's all it takes. That's all it takes. <laughs> Sonnefeld, welcome. Thank you. Chief Sonnefeld. Deputy. Deputy Chief Sonnefeld. Deputy. I'm just here tonight. The Minerva Fire Department, for the month of July, uh, entered in with a venture with Chick-fil-A to do um, some re recruiting and uh, training Straight. money requirements or acquisitions for us to help us raise funds for equipment for our training center and also to help us try to recruit members for the fire department. So if Joe can put that up. It is. Um, there's three sandwiches that are you can buy Chick-fil-A and at the end of the month proceeds from those sandwiches will go towards the Minerva Fire Department to use towards recruiting and retention efforts and also to buy equipment <coughs> for the training center. And then also on... July 15th, uh, it's a Monday. We have a tour of the truck night. We'll have some apparatus up there for kids to climb on, look at, talk to some members. And then also on Monday, July 29th, we're going to have a fire safety night. We'll be doing fire safety presentation to the kids. We'll have some fire hats, some coloring books for them. And also both of those events will be doing recruiting efforts to anybody that wants to join any of the fire departments. So Very good. That's all I have. Thank you so much. A, there's also a thing at the store itself, right, that tells which yeah, sandwiches there, and all of uh, that. Yeah, we have pamphlets there. We have helmets. We have our gear. We have some equipment. And then our crews will be there every day throughout each week, <coughs> hanging out, talking to people, anything we can do to try to help recruit people. And bring Some of the administration at Chick-fil-A took a tour of the training center. Yeah, the, uh, we two weeks ago, one of our members took their uh, general manager and two of their uh, PR people to all the Minerva Fire Stations, the training center. They took pictures of everything. So they know what they're getting themselves into and what we do on a daily basis for the municipality. So. Very good. Great. Good effort. Great, great, right. efforts. Thank you. great effort. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll get that information up on our website as well with all the uh, dates, Tim. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chase. What was his name? Can we even run that on uh, TV 15, Tim? Yeah. Great. Thank you. Excuse me. Nope. <laughs> what was that fireman's name? Jason Sonnefeld. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go with our public comment on proposed agenda items only. Uh, you will have another opportunity to speak at the end of the meeting on any municipal item. However, if you would like to comment at the beginning of the meeting here, that is for only items that are on the agenda. We ask for a five-minute time limit on your comments. <coughs> I will uh, indicate to you whenever you have a minute left. Um, and uh, we want to try to keep your comments contained to five minutes. Hopefully, that's enough time for you to get your point across. And it also helps keep the meeting uh, moving efficiently. So I have a sign-in sheet already that some people signed up. If you haven't signed up yet, you will have an opportunity to do so uh, shortly. So we're going to start with uh, Paige Weenand or Weinand. It's Weenand. Weenand, I got it right the first time. <laughs> Welcome, Paige. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Paige Weenand, and I live on Cottage Lane. I've been a part of the Bel Air swim team for three years. Now, I know it may not seem like a very long time, but in my eyes it has since I've only lived in Monroeville for seven years. The swim team showed me what my passion is, which is working with little kids. It also helped me build up my courage and social skills. I specifically chose Bel Air over other teams because of my friends. I did not want to be part of a team where I did not know anyone. Although I only knew a few people, I still knew, my f I still knew people there. <coughs> um, 
I made a lot of friendships that I thought would never exist. And together with my friends, we had a dream in mind of working together at Bel Air when we were older. Now this dream of ours, and I may exaggerate a little bit, <laughs> will die and vanish if we give away our pool or there is no replacement. This is also my second season working as a little helper for our little CUDA team. This group of young swimmers showed me that I, what I enjoy in life, which is helping little kids, as I said before. This group made me want to become a swim coach and a teacher when I'm older. Belair has taught me many things, and I want other people to learn something about themselves as well. So I'm asking you to give these people a chance and help us achieve our dream. I also would like to ask you to vote no on selling the pool so that we have a time to make a plan. Thank you. Brian Susco. Um, Brian Susco, uh, Lolly Drive, Turnpike Gardens. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, I'm again here to talk about the sale of the land and the proposed closure of the community pool Bel Air. Um, I'll stay within five minutes. The pre-read was four minutes and 32 seconds. So no, need for the, no need for the stage hook today, I promise. Um, last week at Citizens Night, um, I shared my thoughts and gave details on why I think the sale of the land in 2019 doesn't seem necessary. I won't go into all the details again today, but would like to highlight some of the previous comments here today. To sum up the situation, in 2018, the Turnpike's milepost 57 to 67 reconstruction project was awarded funding. And in order for that project to be completed, they would need to purchase the land on or around Bel Air Pool area. They have the right to condemn the land and threaten eminent domain. However, they have not done so to date and have offered the appraisal price of $956,000 for the land with some additional payments for relocation of the trailers, uh, among other things. Um, today, you're here to vote on whether to finalize that sale <coughs> as of around September of this year. However, since the appraisal process started, the, process, uh, the project itself has lost funding and this funding is only revisited on an annual basis. So just as the turnpike has stalled on funding for the project, the conversation about the sale of the land should also be stalled. The turnpike is not threatening eminent domain at this time, and according to Kevin Serge, the lead engineer of the turnpike project, the only thing that would be lost would be the appraisal process at this point, which could easily be repeated once the project funded is, uh, is funded in the future. Now, there's no way of knowing when the turnpike will fund the project, but as a precedent, Plum sold the land that held Plum Aqua Club to the turnpike, in September of 2017. Uh, the funding for that project still has not come in for the mainline construction, and only the Salzburg Road construction has been started, which started this year in 2019. So the land has been sitting there for around two years, uh, and the project is still not have funding assigned to it. Uh, last week, I also went into detail on why the money from the sale of the land would not solve any of the municipality's problems, and I mean truly solve the problems for the long term, including our need for improved infrastructure. As I stated last week, the one-time sale is not a steady revenue stream, it's a band-aid on a broken arm. It just seems to me that there's no legal reason to sell the land to the turnpike this year. There also seems to be no financial reason to sell the land this year. Voting today to not sell the land until the turnpike has funded their, funded their project and is ready to use the land would buy ourselves some time to come up with a plan on what to do after the sale. But there's no reason to lose the use of Bel Air while we devise that plan if the land can't be used for the turnpike project at this time. Mr. Mayor, you mentioned last week that you were going to talk to the private pool owners, um, the board members and the presidents, um, and uh, about options about the area. And I gave details on possible funding options to build a new pool, including DCNR grants and sponsorships. These conversations just started and will take some time to discuss and plan. Either way we go. <laughs> Not selling the land this year buys us that time to create a plan before the sale. And I, I do believe, uh, as Paige stated, we should have a plan in place before the sale is finalized. In my opinion, voting to sell the land today tells the community that we just want to get this over with. I've heard comments that Monroeville just wants to get out of the pool business. And I want to be clear that's not a quote from the members of the council. Mem um, it's just comments that I hear over and over again when I discuss the situation with others. Maybe that's the case, maybe not. But Monroeville has been in the pool business for decades. And for the most part, Bel Air has been self-sufficient, basically breaking even most years, plus or minus a trivial amount. We have not discussed selling the land before the turnpike came to us for funding with funding in 2018, at least not to the extent where an appraisal was executed, as far as I understand it. So now that funding for the project is no longer there, we're back to where we were in 2018. The turnpike does not need the land at this time, and the land that holds a community asset that so many people count on, we'd be losing it for no reason. 
The only real reason to sell the land as I see it would be to play nice with the turnpike and make sure that they have the land when funding comes through, perhaps next year, perhaps in two to five years' time. If this was an empty lot somewhere in the middle of the woods, playing nice would be a fine option. But losing our community pool just to let the turnpike get a head start on land purchases before they have the money to do anything with it would be choosing to make the turnpike commission happy over the citizens of Monroeville. Now, I'm not advocating playing hardball with the turnpike. The construction projects benefit the area. More lanes on the turnpike at certain times of day and certain times of year would be a good thing. But in my opinion, this is teetering on Monroeville being taken advantage of. Um, a statement of the turnpike that says, make a statement to the turnpike today that says, we'll sell you the land when the project is ready to use it. That's a fair ask in any negotiation. But until then, we have to protect the community asset for our citizens. The statement can be made today by voting no to sell the land this year or any year when the project that it needs does not have the money to use it. Thank you for your time. Robert Serafini. Hi, my name is Bob Serafini. I'm a resident of Monroeville. Ditto what that man said. <laughs> he said. He said much more eloquently what I wanted to say tonight. What I wanted to say, I think we should table this another month because you have all these people, and like he said, he talked to one of the commissioners, I mean, one of the people at the, uh, the state for the turnpike. I got the same answer from another guy. Their money is not appropriated. They do not know what they're doing yet. And like I said, I think that uh, Mr. Little ought to talk to a Mr. John Romano again, who he's been dealing with, and see what they can do as opposed to, you know, just delaying it a little bit till we finalize it. Now, other than that, I'm opposed to going to these four pools around the municipality. Mr. Duncan asked for an estimate on what a pool would cost two months in a row. Have you ever gotten a, uh, an answer what the pool would cost? Uh, yes, we, in our packets we received an um, estimate, but I don't think it's my idea of an estimate as far as I'd like to see a replacement of Bel Air. So it would be a pool, uh, split block faced, uh, dressing rooms, you know, restrooms, all handicap accessible. This looks like the Taj Mahal. I don't know if we have a picture of it or whatever. But I was looking. For it came in at uh, four point. Something. Well, four point two, four point two million to replace one that's similar to Bel Air, and then the one that Mr. Duncan's referring to is seven point four million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So four I mean, point. I don't one know. is I similar didn't see to the Bel Air. Replacement one, but yeah. we're not asking yeah, for. Well, I'm not asking this? for some elaborate. I don't you know, think most of the people behind me are either. Because Bel Air isn't that elaborate. I mean, it's beautiful, but yeah. it's something it's in that category. Everybody can use. And I can't see $7 million. Yes. And like I said, when Mr. Osinko last night, he said there was a lot of things that happened at that pool he was not aware of, such as, I must say, the, the parties and things of that. Have. I think a lot of the people, you know, don't know about that in the municipality. And he brought up a good point when he talked to that. A lot of people don't know about that. And I think we ought to keep that. And I think Mr. Little ought to talk to Mr. Romano again and see if we can delay the sale of it at least another year until we figure out something more to do. Best. Now, I've heard the fact that you want to go to the four pools in the municipality. That was one thing that you said, Mayor, that you wanted to do. <clears throat> I've heard another thing that they wanted to get one pool. Now, is there anybody who wants to discuss that one? Because you've said about the four pools that you want to divide the wealth on that. No, I did not say that. Well, basically, you said I said uh, we would we were going to set up a committee to talk to the other the private four pools, clubs, yes. But nothing is off the table as far as the project, if there is a potential project down the road. Well, is there one project where you're going to go with one pool? That committee has not met yet with the private pools and the other swim team in the Barracudas and all the other uh, swim clubs in the community. So there's no plan to go with just one pool. Not saying that that's not out of the question, but there at this point there's no plan. Well, once again, I'm asking you to table this tonight to let Mr. Little talk to Mr. Romano out there, who he's been dealing with for over a year. Now, if we're, he's been dealing with him for over a year, and you brought this to our attention three months ago, I don't think another month is going to hurt. 
So would you please consider that everybody tonight about tabling it one more month and let him have another shot at it. Thank you. Melissa Beck. Hi. Um, <coughs> my understanding, um, uh, because some citizens have been calling me, uh, Melissa Beck, sustainable Monroeville and resident of Monroeville for 25 years, um, that there's other parcels available that Monroeville owns right around the pool. So I would put forward um, that uh, as part of this plan, after we table, or hopefully you, guys, you all table um, the proposal for tonight's vote, is that we spend at least a year doing some research and in the meantime, look into the idea of using some of the other parcels of Monroeville property to put um, you know, a new parking lot because the, the turnpike would need the parking lot, we understand. That's all that they need, not the pool itself. Um, you know, got to put in the plug for the permeable parking lot or at least the parking spaces that let the water run f through instead of uh, polluting, polluting the stream. Um, and also, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if uh, you found out yet, um, Mr. Mayor, uh, Dr. Mayor, who, who um, owns the mineral rights underneath the property? We have not found out yet. Um, and so but that is, that is... Where are you in the research phase of that? Mr. Yeah, Patrick, you yeah. Did. Last week was a short week, and <clears throat> we're waiting on a title search, and the title searchers last week, as you can imagine, there wasn't a lot of productivity in the country last week, including Allegheny County. Or so. the prior three or four weeks? Well, maybe, yeah. I mean, when it, we first it, it takes a while to, uh, to search pieces, particularly older pieces like so, that. So I would propose then that there absolutely certainly be no vote tonight because I am extremely concerned on behalf of the 150 people that we represent, um, Monroeville citizens and surrounding communities through Sustainable Monroeville <coughs> were really concerned about who owns those gas and mineral rights underneath that property as it is four-tenths of a mile from um, uh, at least one well pad for deep Marcellus drilling, um, which is a very deep concern um, for all of us. And people can go to the Sustainable Monroeville Facebook page, the thesustainablemonroeville.blogspot.com <coughs> to see more details on that. Um, the other thing I wanted to do, yeah, I'll plug the, the, uh, the uh, Monroeville Community Day and our, our thing later, because that's not on the agenda. Yeah, and, and Dr. Beck, just real quick, if, the, if, <coughs> if there is a vote on the ordinance, the mineral rights, that is not um, hashed out until the deed process. If there is a vote tonight with this council before we know 100% who owns the mineral rights at every level underneath that property, I think that this is a serious, serious misstep. And like I repeated at one of the other meetings, if everybody in this room doesn't move out of this community, it would be a big problem because we're building cancer centers and we're not supporting the community. And that's all I have to say. Michaelena Estramera. Hello, my name is Michaelina Shamara. I live in Alpine Village and here representing the Mineralville Community Pool. I've been going to Beller Pool since I was a baby. My family and I go to, to the pool to have fun, relax, and meet new people. I also am on the swim team for the pool. For the past four years, we have won the championship meet, and this year we moved up to Division One. The team has become my family over the years. From younger kids to older kids, we have all become very close and caring to each other. As one of the middle-aged kids, I was planning on working there. Once I turned 14, I would learn the responsibility and how to be a young adult. I would also look forward to when I would graduate. I have seen so many people graduate in the past years, and I couldn't wait to do it at Beller Pool. During the day, before all meets and after all practices, this is a time for us to have fun. I would always see kids and adults smiling. The best is when my little <laughs> cousins come up to me and tell me they have gotten their deep water bracelets. These are reasons why you should not close the pool or at least find a new location for another community pool. I thank you for your time and hope you take us into consideration. Uh, that is all that is uh, signed up on the sheet I have, but if anyone would like to address council on any uh, 
agenda item, now would be your time to do it and you could sign in. <clears throat> Um, hi, Carol Poli, 136 Kelly Court, Monroeville. Um, Just sign your name. Now. Oh, I'm sorry. No okay. problem. Thank you. This is new for me. No problem. <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. Um, the sale of the pool for the municipality is strictly a business deal. It's going to net the municipality 900 some thousand dollars. For the swim team that's here, for <coughs> all of us pool people that are here, um, it's an emotional thing. Uh, I've lived in Monroeville for 24 years. I have my children learn to swim at the pool. Um, I took aerobics there, and I've been going for the past 24 years. Um, I think everybody here feels the same way. And it's not, you know, I live close to the wave pool. I could walk there. But I choose to go to the Monroeville pool because of the atmosphere there. It's more a family-oriented place. It's a place where I felt safe leaving my kids. If I had to run, I could leave them there. It's just a nice atmosphere. It's a nice family place. Um, it's not just people in Monroeville that come to the pool. I have one friend that comes from Forest Hills with her four children. She belongs, you know, season pass. Uh, there's a friend from East McKeesport that has a pool in White Oak that's seven minutes from her house. She chooses to come there. Another one from Churchill that comes. Our oldest member probably is 87 years old. She sold her house in Monroeville, has a pool at her apartment complex, but still on the weekends comes to be with all of the friends that she's made, you know, at the pool. Um, I think the bottom line for all of us is we just want, if you're going to say, I don't know, it's memories for us. You can't put a value on the memories that we've made at this pool. They're priceless. So we really, ultimately, we would love for you to vote no. Um, if, in fact, you don't, we would like an alternative place to go so that we'd have a place to make memories for years to come. Now, I don't know anything about this, but Foxwood, is that something that Monroeville owns? Because that swim club has closed. And I didn't know if that was a possibility, you know, that we could look into you know, maybe refurbishing that, and that could be a place we could go to. Does anybody know who owns that? It's a private club, and there are bondholders at the club. It's in receivership. It's, yeah, it's closed. Correct. Right. So, I mean, is, I'm just throwing that out as a possibility <laughs> that maybe that's a place we could consider as well. It could be considered. Okay. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Kim Janako, Haymaker Road. Uh, um, lifetime resident of Monroeville, lived here my entire life, born and raised here, raised four kids here. <coughs> um, obviously also here to speak about the pool. Um, I think I can probably speak for a lot of, and I'm sorry I get like emotional when I speak. <laughs> Uh, for a lot of people in the room here that what's besides the fact that we're losing the pool potentially losing the pool what's most alarming to me is that there's no plan I mean everybody heard at the last meeting all of the things that are housed at that pool you have a swim team you have a community you have camps you have all these things that are happening that a lot of people in council didn't even know were happening at the pool um, and, and they're all housed there and Without a plan for where you're going to house those things, I, I feel there's you should not be voting to sell the property. If you were going to sell your house, <coughs> you would have a plan of where you were going to live. You wouldn't just sell your house and then figure out what you were going to do. And that's exactly what council is doing by making this vote to sell the pool. You're selling a home for many people, and you have no plan of where you're going to place those people. Um, I think also, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, 
waiting to make the vote before you have the plan, I think, is the best thing to do. Um, and I think um, some of the remarks that were made by the gentleman, Mr. Susco, prior to me, I think should be given a lot of thought. Um, and I would really like to see council table this vote or come up with a plan before they decide to vote. Um, I remember what I wanted to say. Um, I also have heard the things about Monroeville not wanting to be in the bit pool business anymore. Again, not a direct quote. That's just you hear that throughout the community whenever we've been talking about this pool for the last eight years. Um, and although Monroeville and the council may not want to be in the pool business anymore, you are in the business of serving your community. And by getting rid of the pool, you are doing a disservice to your community. Um, the pool breaks even every year. The pool is not costing a lot of money to the to the community. It's it's providing a service to the community. Um, and by voting to get rid of it or not have a plan to replace it, um, you are not servicing the business that you're supposed to be in as a council. Um, uh, Kathy Bernardi, and hang on, because I can't do two Take things at one time. Thanks. Kathy, you're a Monroeville resident. I am Regal Court. <coughs> Welcome. Oh, thanks. <coughs> so I don't belong to Bel Air. Um, I'm the Marlin swim coach, and so if you don't know swimming, and I would bet none of you really do. Um, in Monroeville, we have a year-round swim program, and I'm one of their coaches. Um, but I actually am a member of Haymaker, and I grew up in Monroeville, and uh, my sister's on the record board at Gateway Heights. So I certainly have some familiar, and my son swims for the JCC, and Marlins is practicing at the Wave Pool. So when you guys are throwing out these pool options, I'm sitting here kind of giggling because my daughter who swims Monday, Wednesday, Friday at the Wave Pool, when someone said, you know, something about the wave pool, she leaned over and said, it's a dump. And it's lovely. We're appreciative of Allegheny County for letting the Marlins practice there three days a week for a lot of money, but we're appreciative. Um, but if, if you were there at 9 o'clock in the morning and saw the sheer amount of garbage that's left in that pool every day, you'd be grossed out as we are. Um, uh, my son swims at the JCC, and when the Marlins asked the JCC Sailfish for an opportunity to use their pool, the answer was no. That pool is reserved for the JCC Sailfish. So I'm not sure how that can be an option for any swim teams, but that's not my problem uh, so much as this. I'm a resident of Monroeville, and a selling point in Monroeville <coughs> is not just the private pools, but it's the community pool and all of the community things that are offered. I teach at Norwin, and so God knows I hear a lot in North Huntington about the evils that are Monroeville. They're scared of Gateway in North Huntington. They're scared of the mall. They're, they think that I must be very brave and walk around like, you know, Kevlar vests or something in Monroeville. They have no idea how awesome our community is, and I just kind of think shame on them because they don't know what they're missing. We live in an exceptional community and one of the great things about this community is our school district it's a great one but also the other great thing about our community is that we have so many things for so many people and the pool is a place that's not just for swim team and I have a vested interest in swimming in this community but the pool itself and I can't help but reiterate as a member of this community um, who has no I mean I don't send my kid to uh, any parks and rec thing at Bel Air my kids don't swim my kids swim for me at Haymaker um, but what we offer in this community is huge and to eliminate that for a, a, a hope and a promise and a, 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 and no plan is really short-sighted for just those of us who aren't Bel Air members there are people in here who don't belong to Bel Air and we're just invested in Monroeville and so not all of these people I just want to make sure you know these aren't just Monroeville people and they are just uh, I mean they're not just Bel Air people and they're not just Bel Air swimmers there are Monroeville residents in here who have just a concern for Monroeville I really would ask that before you just take $900,000, which is a lot of money, I recognize that, of course I do, but before you take that and then it's gone, I would just ask that you consider the value to the community because I would bet that probably none of your kids were ever swimmers. I would bet that you guys probably don't often go to the community pools. So you had no idea that there is a huge, huge 
thing here in Monroeville, but there is. And I would hope that these last few meetings have kind of clued you in that there are people who are very invested in the community pools that you probably just didn't even expect. So again, I would say, I think we need to have <coughs> some sort of plan before we shut down the pool, because as a member of the Monroeville community, I find that that pool very necessary. Hi, I'm Sylvia Edwards. I live in Garden City. <coughs> Bad at multitasking. All right, so I guess my background, so I grew up with the pool and I've kind of had every phase. So I think just on like a regular basis, I think I've only seen maybe two of you guys at the pool. I work with one of your daughters and I think like how they were kind of saying, like you don't really see like every day on an atmosphere like how I've seen. So I grew up there, I met my literal best friends to eat this day and I got to swim on the team and then I got to coach the team and even now like I have a busy life at school and instead of like doing like other internships and stuff over the summer, like I still find a way to come back and like coach and work at the pool because like the relationships that I've established have just helped me so much. And seeing a lot of like my other like swimmers tonight and the, uh, the past couple of weeks and all the parents and how emotional everyone is about it. Like I've actually been crying, I don't know if you saw me, <laughs> but I don't know, it's just hard because it is something that you get so emotionally attached to and not having like a personal basis it just makes it different. So on my school campus and then in high school and everything, I have had a lot of leadership roles working with different tiers of hierarchy. And one thing, like a trend that I've noticed across all the boards was that when you go into like a big decision, usually like you have your mind made up before you hear everyone talk. And even like I know all of most of us in this room no, like we don't want the pool to close, but I think we all do know it's an ineb inevitable to happen eventually. <laughs> but I think until like it is necessary, I just want to ask you guys to seriously like, consider like what we've everyone has been saying for the past few weeks, and just really like kind of let it settle in. Because I know it's easy to make a decision with what you already like have made up in your mind, but I think there's really no rush. So why rush it? That's it. Short and sweet. Is there anyone else that would like to address council on any agenda item? You just sign in and yes. state your name for the uh, My name is Julio Estramera, uh, Alpine uh, Village. And I'll, I'll keep it pretty brief. Um, I know we, <clears throat> we were here last week and we talked about um, a committee that would be put together and in place to discuss a plan. Um, so my question is, uh, has there been, and I know it's been a short week, uh, an extremely short week, but is there um, a committee in place to discuss this plan? Yes. And has a meeting transpired so far <clears throat> to discuss? No, we, we've, we have met, we met previously with the uh, JCC pool. Um, but we have not met with the private swim clubs yet. Okay. So is, is there a meeting uh, on the calendar in the very near future with any of these clubs? At this point, discuss? the committee was waiting to see if it was going to be, the ordinance was going to be acted upon, whether it be tabled or voted up or down before um, okay. the meetings were set. So with that being said, I mean, and I think you've heard tonight that um, without a plan that we, we, should, we really shouldn't move forward with um, – this this vote actually and and I want to you know reiterate what, what Brian said there, there's really no rush here um, you know vote no so that we can have the time you know whether it's a year to because it's not going to be something easy my, my biggest fear you know with with going forward with this sale you approve it um, you have your committee in place uh, moving forward to discuss and a plan moving forward is that six months down the road, we hear that, you know, you've worked with the four pools, you couldn't really hammer out um, a, a location for 
the community pool to fill that void. You know, I fear that, you know, the plan would sound something like the high school is going to take over this camp. This pool is going to take over this camp. Um, the JCC may allow a few members in for maybe two to three year period of time. <coughs> We're going to kick each pool five thousand ten thousand dollars for some improvement maybe they get into an agreement where they allow Monroeville residents for a three or four year period of time to come freely and then after that everyone's on their own you know and you've accepted the money the sales going through and you know and I know you guys said you were committed to um, coming up with a with a pretty solid plan and working to fill that void for the Monroeville community but I don't think that you know, again, we should proceed with any sale until there's been a significant amount of time and effort put forth to coming up with a solid plan. And that's all I really have to say. So. Is there anyone else that would like to address council on the agenda? Bertie Bernardi, uh, Regal Court. Um, I've been up here a few times, and uh, one part of uh, what I'm sort of gleaning from most of you, I think, or some of you, is, um, and, and I hope that you're not basing your vote tonight on something that you're unsure of. If you're going to vote yes with a plan to have the four um, private clubs fill the void, I think you maybe haven't asked those private clubs anything yet. Most of them don't have parking available or facilities available for handicapped or staff available to handle the volume of swimmers that Bel Air does. Um, you, you, you might think you have a solution in hand and you say, yeah, yeah, let's sell it. I know we can get that to work. But I'm not sure if you've actually asked them that. And, and I think you would be doing a disservice to Monroeville to vote yes without actually knowing that. It sounds like you have a committee, I don't know who's on it, um, and you maybe have had feelers out to some of these pools, but until you actually ask them and, and put forth the notion of what it would take to have public swimmers at their pool, <coughs> probably they can't even handle the insurance costs. There's a lot of, yeah, it sounds great, support your local pools, and, and there's money if the, in the sale to maybe do that. But until you actually drill down in and what that means to those pools and the burden that you'll place on them, even if they want it, I mean, those are private entities in most of the cases are just private companies. They can't be forced to do it. So if they don't want to, they don't have to. And so if you're voting yes to, in the back of your mind, thinking the, pro the lo local pools can handle it, I think you maybe should hold at the very least table, if not vote no, until you at least talk to them. It sounds like the plan is going to come after the approval of sale, and I feel like the plan should come before the approval of sale. At least a skeleton of a plan, at least having asked some of the other pools besides the JCC. I know, Mayor, you had talked about um, the JCC possibly um, being a home for the Barracudas in the future, but the Barracudas swim short course, which is 25 yards or 25 meters, and the JCC pool in the summer is set up to be long course. It's not a compatible pool. And the JCC swim team is in the pool at the same time the Barracudas are in there. So I, I, while I appreciate the gesture from the JCC, and maybe there's something that can be worked out with times of days, again, it's just we haven't asked the right questions of the right people or sat the right people down at the right table. So <coughs> I ask before you vote yes or no to consider that you maybe not have all the facts that you need in order to vote. Thank you. <coughs> Samantha Estramera, uh, Alpine Village. Um, 
I would I, I'm going to keep this short, but I just listening to everybody here tonight um, and hearing everything that everyone has spent time on gathering information. <laughs> um, the residents have of Monroe have actually gone out and done research to present to s reasons why this vote tonight would not be beneficial. Um, with that said, the things that I'm hearing are there's only one reason to conduct the vote tonight, to go forth with the vote tonight, and that was based on pleasing the turnpike from what Brian Susco said. We have not heard any other <coughs> real reason why it has to happen tonight. Eminent domain is not right now. Turnpike is not pushing because they do not have the funds. They might be pushing by saying we'll do the sale, but they are not taking that land this year, next year. We don't even know when they will want it. So doing the sale tonight, they're really, I have not heard a reason that gives me the idea of why we should be voting to sell it tonight. Um, so I am going to put out there, if there is a reason, please let us know, because apparently we're not finding that reason um, to say that we should be voting tonight. Please table it, look into it more, and that's my request. Thank you. Serve you to state your name for the record. Frank McCarrick, Mayberry Drive. Um, as you probably know, Mr. Mayor, I did a right to know uh, request through the municipality. I got those records that I requested. A part of those were an email uh, sent by one of the pool presidents stating that he represented all of the private pools in Monroeville. Um, and we would like to just have council know that that does not represent Haymaker. Um, we were not a part of a discussion with him, with you, or anybody. And we just, I just think council should know that. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Hi, Eric Bruno, Alpine Village. Well, for the second month, you guys have sat up there patiently while we've expressed how we feel about the pool. And I'm sure in the back of your mind, the thought is, do we want to go through this another month? I would say table it for another month. Give some of us that know people an opportunity to talk to the turnpike. I know the turnpike's been talked to, but Maybe with a little more time, we can put a little more pressure on them to buy Bel Air a little more, a couple more years. So I would ask that you table it for another month, even though I'm sure you're tired of hearing all of us, to give other people the opportunity to talk to the turnpike too. Thank you. Hi, Kristen Marcian, Gordon City. I have been a lifetime member of Monroeville. I've been a lifetime member of Bel Air. Um, I can walk to Garden City Pool, but I chose to take my children to Bel Air. I can't think of a summer and not have Bel Air come into my head. The lifeguards love our kids. I feel, my four-year-old, I feel safe with him going around the pool. Everyone knows him. He is safe. It's a safe place. You guys have heard that a thousand times already. Come visit our pool, please. We have a swim meet tomorrow night against 
haymaker. As you can see, Kathy Benardi is, we all love her. We all swim with her. Whether Marlin's haymaker, we love her. She is phenomenal. Come to one of our meets. If you can't make tomorrow night, look at our calendar on the website, or I will be glad to send you the dates of our home meets. Come visit the pool. I know I've seen some of you there before. Stop by on a Saturday, even if it's just 15, 20 minutes. Just come see the atmosphere there. We all know the sell of the pool is going to happen. But all we're asking you to do is maybe say no or table it. And come visit the pool and give us, give us a few more years to enjoy our pool until the turnpike's ready to use it. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address council on any agenda item? Seeing I'm going to close that portion of the meeting. Mayor, while we're on that subject, can I make one comment? Sure. I, you know, I've heard tonight that um, a lot of us may have not been to the pool, but I'm a 42-year resident of Mineroville, and for 34 of those years, I've worked on and with Bel Air Pool. That was part of my job as, uh, as I worked for Public Works. And my family has swam there, and um, I was actually part of the refurbishing crew that started in 1979, I believe. I could be wrong, 79 or 80, when we gun eyed the pool and when we took it over. So I'm very familiar with that pool as one of the seating councilmen. I just wanted to let you all know that. Mr. Mayor, um, I'd like to call an executive session for some questions on if we table, if we don't, if we say no. I think I'd like to review that with our solicitor if. So you're making I'll a motion? I'll second it. In a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, folks, we're going to go into executive session. You can just stay where you're at, and we're going to exit.
So I'd like to seek a motion to come out of executive session. Motion. Second. second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Mm. So we are, uh, we are through our public comment um, period. Um, is there a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we remove the sell the property from the agenda. Second. I will second it. There is a, a motion and a second to remove this item from the agenda. Um, I'll just make a brief comment. The, so currently the, the ordinance is tabled. Uh, council would have to act on that to vote on it to pull it off the table. What council is deciding to, doing, to do is to pull it off the agenda totally. So it is not going to be voted on this evening. It is also not going to be placed back on an agenda until council votes to put it back on the agenda. At that time, they would have to also take it off the table and then vote on it. Uh, what we're going to do is the committee's going to do some legwork here over the next uh, several weeks and start to get some more answers. Uh, the committee is myself, Mr. Little, Mr. Harvey, and Mr. Poach. We are going to meet with the private swim clubs, uh, Haymaker, Possibly Ga Gateway even Heights. Uh, Haymaker, Gateway Heights, Park, and uh, Garden City, also the JCC, uh, and we are also potentially going to, well, we're going to reach out to the Turnpike as well in the process, and also to the Barracudas team, and uh, try to Marlins. do some more, yes, yeah, into the Marlins, and all the interested uh, parties at that time. So at this point, with the motion and the second is to remove it from the agenda. So a vote in the affirmative is to remove from the agenda. So roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Yersinko. Aye. Mr. Duncan. Definitely. Mr. Wilson. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you. Well, certainly your voices were heard. We appreciate you coming out and uh, supporting your cause. So, uh, folks, we are going to go back into our regular meeting. Um, if you would love to stick around, we'd love to have you. <laughs> we, uh, we understand that a lot of you may not want to, so I can give you a few minutes to exit. Certainly, you are, you are free to stay, though, if you wish. There it goes. Thank you. Is it something we said? Yeah, <laughs> it's something we said. That's good. Yeah, that's good. No. Can that take place in one meeting, or does it have to take place over two meetings? Hang tight, Alex. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Good luck with that. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. You, you can go. I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah, that process, uh, yeah. that process I just described... That process I just described as far as putting it back on the agenda, uh, that would not be done in one meeting. Mm -mm. That is something that uh, we would place on it from a work session and moving it forward to a regular council meeting. We would also advertise that as well prior to, um, prior to that meeting. So it, is not a, it won't just be placed very quickly in one meeting. No. So there was a question uh, while people were exiting. Is, is it appropriate to ask a quick question? Uh, we, you have public comment at the end of the meeting. Sorry. Yeah, we're going to get executive session announcement. We did just exit for one, but we also have another one that I'm going to announce that council conducted an executive session for <coughs> personnel and litigation reasons prior to Citizens Night on Thursday, July 2nd, beginning at 6.30 p.m. until 7 p.m. and before tonight's council meeting, beginning at 6.40 p.m. until 7 p.m. Council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at the July 9th, 2019 council meeting. Council, we have the minutes uh, that we went over on Thursday. I'm sorry, of last Tuesday uh, for the Citizens' Night meeting of June 6, 2019, the Council Work Session of June 6, 2019, and the regular Council meeting of June 11, 2019. Next motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any comments or questions, Council? Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson. Aye. <coughs> Duncan. Aye. Mr. Arasenko. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mrs. Gator. Aye. The ayes have it. Reports of our tax collections, Council. Motion to approve. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve. Any comments? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Arsenko. Aye. Mr. Duncan. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. The ayes have it. List of bills and budget transfers. Motion to approve. 
Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mr. Duncan. Aye. Mr. Arsenka. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mrs. Gators. Aye. The ayes have it. And the payroll report. Motion to approve. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any comments? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Duncan? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. The ayes have it. And once again, all those items were discussed at our July 2nd uh, agenda setting meeting. Council, moving over to our vacancies on boards, commissions, and authorities. It's in your packet uh, in the blue, uh, blue section. Mrs. Gatos, do you have anything for this evening? I do not. Thank you. Mr. Poach? I do. Uh, I'd like to nominate uh, Gordon Kahn for the Recreation and Parks Advisory Board. I'll second. Which term is that? Well, that is a um, nomination. nomination. That is a nomination. We have a, a motion and a second to nominate. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Poach, anything else this evening? Uh, no, sir. Mr. Harvey? Nothing. Mr. Arasinko? Nothing. Mr. Duncan? It would be Nothing. 19 to 20. Mr. Wilson? No. Sorry. Very good. Sorry. Council, we're moving over to our uh, consent agenda. It's old business. Uh, AR Building Company Incorporated. Mr. Little? Okay, uh, applicant is requesting to rezone 7.7 .7 acres of property currently zoned C2 business commercial to R5 multifamily residential. The properties are located along Old William Penn Highway, parcel 742P74, Garden City Drive, parcel 742R345, and Evergreen Drive, parcel 742P90. The Planning Commission recommends approval with conditions. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. <clears throat> Any comments? I will just make the comment that this was a public hearing item at our uh, July 2nd meeting, and it was fully discussed. Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Duncan? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gators? Aye. The ayes have it. Council, we have mo one motion Thank this you, evening. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see you again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good one luck. motion this evening. Mr. Little. Okay, a motion to accept a memorandum of understanding between the Public Works Union and Utility Workers United Association, Local 537, and the Municipality of Monroeville, Monroeville clarifying and adding certain provisions to the Union Collective Bargaining Agreement, an addendum subject to the Union ratification. Motion. Second. second. There's a motion and a second to approve. Any comment? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Duncan? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. The ayes have it. Moving over to our new business council. Uh, two items this evening. Mr. Lewis. Yeah, Gen 3 surveying. Applic applicant is requesting preliminary and final subdivision approval of tax parcel 741S389 and 741S216. Applicant proposes to combine the two lots to create one lot totaling 2.586 acres. The address is the property, property is 422 Hazel <coughs> Drive in the R2 one family residential zoning district. Planning Commission recommends approval with conditions. Motion, motion to approve. approve. <laughs> wow. Okay. Two wow. motions, uh, would one of you like to second it? Second. <laughs> a motion and a second to approve. Any comments here. or questions? <laughs> Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Duncan? Aye. Mr. Arsenko? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gato? Aye. The ayes have it. Mr. Little? Okay, this was a conditional use uh, hearing we had on uh, last week. Applicants requesting conditional use approval pursuant to Ordinance 2635, Section 401.55B1A of the Monroeville Zoning Ordinance 1443 as amended to replace an existing utility pole and install an antenna and equipment on a new utility pole. The pole is located at 4110 William Penn Highway and identified as pole number P.325402 in the C2 Business Commercial Zoning District. Planning Commission recommends approval with conditions. Motion. Second. The motion is second to approve. Any comments or questions? Just so everyone knows. As I recall, this is just for cell phone use. Yes. Yes. yes, and it's yes. behind yes. the it's behind the miracle yeah. mouth, so it's not in a neighborhood or anything. <clears throat> yeah. Just so everyone's clear. Yes. Yeah. And do we still have an image of that? 
We did. We did. Yeah. Joe, do you have an image of that still? Or? Thank you. There it is. And it's just the replacement of one pole, and that's what it would be behind the uh, miracle, miracle mall. So we have a motion and a second to approve. Any other comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mr. Duncan. Aye. Mr. Arsenko. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Skato. Aye. The ayes have it. Moving over to our resolutions, we have four resolutions this evening. Mr. Little. Okay, the first one is a resolution approving the disposition of records as set forth in the Municipal Records Manual. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second to approve. Any comments? No, basically this is a housekeeping item. Correct. So. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gato. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Arsenko. Aye. Mr. Duncan. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. The ayes have it. Yes. <laughs> okay, second one is a resolution recognizing the Monroeville Foundation as a civic and or service association under the Local Options Small Games of Chance Act as amended. Motion. Second. We have okay. a motion and a second to approve. Any comments? Just a question. Fill me in on again what that's for. What that is for is anytime you have small games of chance such as 50-50s, raffles, a community. This is for community day. I remember. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I'm good. I'm very good. good. Any other comments or questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mr. Duncan. Aye. Mr. Arsenko. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mrs. Cato. Aye. Okay, a resolution adopting the Mulhai, is that the way? Mulhi? Mulhi Residential <coughs> Development Sewage Planning Module. Motion. Second. <coughs> Motion and a second to approve. Any comments or questions? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Arsenko. Aye. Mr. Duncan. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. The ayes have it. Mr. Little. Okay, and the fourth is uh, a resolution authorizing the execution of a consent order and agreement between the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Department of Environmental Protection, and the municipality of Monroeville, the, Municip the Monroeville Municipal Authority, and numerous other municipalities which are served by the Franklin Township Municipal Sanitary Authority. Mr. Ratcher explained this at the work session last Tuesday. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve. Any comments or questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mr. Duncan. Aye. Mr. Arsenko. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Cato's. Aye. The ayes have it. And as we mentioned earlier, the one ordinance that was on the on the agenda has been pulled from the agenda. <coughs> so we're going to move to our reports of our municipal staff. Mr. Rasher, do you have any comments this evening? None. I'm a little voice challenged tonight, so okay, we'll go even easy better yet. Oh, same as Mr. Arsenka. Well, he always is. Mr. Little. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a while. I resemble that. A few items. Uh, as I, I've mentioned the last couple of months, uh, ECSNR is going to be doing a uh, hazardous and electronic waste collection <laughs> Uh, that's uh, Saturday, July 20th, 2019 at the Public Works. And also, as Joe, you can flash that flyer back up again. Um, also, there is going to be curbside recycling, uh, as I have mentioned the last uh, several months, where ECSNR will be able to come to your neighborhood, your house, and there will be fees uh, charged for it, obviously, but we recommend that you call them or there will be a link on our website that you can um, register for that. And you can also register for the uh, uh, waste collection uh, on Saturday, July the 20th. Um, thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm. Okay, second item is Monroeville Community Day, as we were just discussing, is gonna be on July 27th, Saturday, up at Community Park West. Also, the Monroeville Jazz Festival will be August the 17th. Uh, and also, the Monroeville Foundation Golf Outing will be Friday, September, <laughs> 13th at Meadow Wink Golf Course in Murraysville. Mm -hmm. And just a couple sure. comments at the work session last week. I was remiss in not wishing Mr. Dom LaGorga uh, a happy retirement. Um, a lot of council members did. And Dom, I enjoyed working with you. You're a bright guy. Um, you know what you're doing with the traffic lights mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and everything else. Another comment is July 20th, uh, the date up there for the uh, electronic waste collection remind, reminded me of another July 20th anniversary. We have the 50th anniversary coming up with the moon landing, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there'll be a lot of stuff on TV, and if, uh, if a lot of the people in the back part of the room probably 
don't remember the, the moon landing on July 20th, um, uh, 1969, but it was surely an event, Maybe and I know. think you uh, watch it on TV because it was, it was the biggest um, technological peacetime advancement the humankind has ever seen. And uh, me watching it, you don't realize uh, what, what happened back in the 1960s as time has gone by. It's been uh, from 1903 when the Wright brothers took flight until we landed on the moon was 66 years. And we're 50 years from the moon landing. And we haven't gone back, but we've done a lot of other things. But I think we should go back. And I think it's uh, worth watching on TV all the different uh, shows that will be on, on the, about the moon landing. And that concludes my report. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Little. Mr. Hugis, do you have anything for this evening? I do not. <laughs> and uh, we have our Director of Finance, Josie Rock. You do have something this evening. I your do presentation have something. For us. Our mid-year financial update. Council has a hard copy of, uh, of this presentation. Uh, okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> So I'll try and be brief, uh, as we've already, you know, have a lengthy meeting. So what I'm going to be talking about is the, briefly about the December 31st, 2018 audit and a budget update as of June 30th of this year. And we'll start out with our friendly little auditor was back again this year. I saw Tim. That's what he looks like. Yeah, is that Tim? <laughs> no, he I don't know. No, it's not Tim. <laughs> they, um, as usual, they started uh, their audit in uh, March. And after a few weeks of field work and emails back and forth, um, they completed um, their field work and went to back to their office to develop the uh, comprehensive annual financial report and also the uh, filing for the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Devel Development. Um, the CAFR, uh, when complete, I'm sorry, com comprehensive annual financial report is CAFR abbreviated. Um, and when it's complete, we have to submit it by June 30th to the uh, Government Finance Officers Association. And we've been doing this and receiving recognition for the past 26 years. Um, once our Finance Committee and Council reviews the report, um, it will be on our website for you know, the public to, to view. I'm going to just give you a few financial highlights, um, and I'll have a little bit of graphs throughout the presentation. So our fund balance um, in the general fund was $15,197,592, um, which is a total balance. Now, the unassigned portion of that fund balance is fourteen million four ten seven sixty nine, which is about forty four percent of the revenues that we bring in. Um, the unassigned portion, but what that means is it's money that um, we're free to spend because we have other things that are either committed to other projects or uh, assigned for something, but. The, the 14 4 is really, I don't want to say discretionary uh, spend, spending, but that, that's really what it is. It's when, you know, if we need something, that's what we would. Fall is it back safe to on. say that's our savings? So, yeah, it's a, yeah, exactly. Um, also, the municipality had 13.9 million of gross bond debt um, and 
14.4 million of net debt outstanding. Um, that is a decrease of 2.735 or 16 percent from the previous year. We also, as part of our debt, have 839,000 of capital leases, most of which will expire uh, within the next few years. Um, again, the, the majority of that, 79.4 percent, relates to fire trucks, which will not mature until 2024. Um, that debt burden on the per capita debt burden, which is on each uh, person, is $538. Um, our fund balance, our general fund, fund balance, increased by 20736 which was significantly lower than the increase, the 2017 increase, which we had of $3.7 million. The drop is due in part to leveling of our tax collection audits and transfers for capital improvement purposes. Yeah, so we're not gonna <clears throat> Where's the money come from? And uh, we although that looks pretty, money does not come from trees. Mm -hmm. You mean it does? It doesn't. It is the one I It does look like Kim's <laughs> Okay, our two th analysis of the revenues, there's a little picture there. Um, our 2018 tax revenue, we had 31% comes from real estate tax, 27% from your earned income tax, and then your bi business privilege and mercantile tax are about 29%. So those are the, the major sources of income for the municipality. Uh, the others are, you know, uh, less than 10 percent. Josie, what's the regional asset tax? That's part of the sales tax revenue that comes from Allegheny <coughs> County. Um, and it gets distributed okay. Okay. through the municipalities within Allegheny County. Um, so this next slide I just gave you a graphic representation of tax revenue collections for the past yeah, mm -hmm. three years from 16, 17, and 18. Just, and as you can see, they're fairly level transfer, oh. for each of those yeah. groupings. The first is real estate tax, then in earned income, then your business tax, which is a combination of the mercantile <coughs> and uh, and business privilege. Uh, you can see our real estate transfer bumped a little, but uh, you know that's based upon home and commercial sales. Other revenues, I apologize, this looked better. Uh, the colors did, but uh, you know when I was preparing the slide. Um, we have state and local shared revenues, which basically come from the state and county, of 1.6 million. License and permits generate about 1.4 million. And then the rest is just miscellaneous earnings that we have throughout the year. <clears throat> On the other revenues, we include uh, <clears throat> general municipal pension state aid in the amount of 833000 Um I always like to include our Marcellus Shale impact, impact fee, which is 15000 That's just an amount that help us with our maintaining our roads and so forth. The fire insurance tax distribution was 162000 but that does get turned over. Uh, once we get that check, we need to turn it over to the volunteer fire companies, which we do. Okay, this next little graph is, is um, the impact of the tax collector audits. That, the red line at the top 
the top is the uh, current, the bottom is the delinquent. So if you look at the red line, that's the current mercantile. And it, you can see as that's going up, the green is the delinquent mercantile. That's going down. So it's, we've pretty much, you know, with our mercantile anyway, um, have, you know, done as much as we can. Now, the business privilege, as you can see, the purple and the blue are still both on the rise. So um, <clears throat> that maybe has another year or so that, you know, I, I'm not really sure. But all right. Next slide, and we're going to talk it's about me. spending. <laughs> Linda written all over it. Uh, analysis of the expenditures. I just gave you a list. Now, the total general fund expenditures were $29 million. That These numbers come from what we report to the Pennsylvania Department of Economic and Community Development. They do tie back to our financial statements <coughs> and the CAFR. Uh, but as you can see, the biggest spending is there at the top with uh, police at 431 per capita. Culture and recreation is next at 155 per capita. Then our, our debt service, that's just for this year is 113 per capita. And then the rest are, you know, just what it costs to run the government. Understand. And this is graphic form, and you can see everything's like, everything's small, and then we go up for public safety, which it's an important thing to have. This next mm -hmm. little, um, yeah table is, is, I found interesting. Um, I compared other municipalities with debt, revenue per capita, expenditures per capita, and then our change revenues, less expenditures per capita. And we actually, that what, what I used to, to compare is population. <clears throat> so we're looking at people that are with, I mean, municipalities that are within the 28,000, give or take a few. As you can see, <laughs> we're doing actually pretty well with the public's money. Um, our debt per capita in this particular case <clears throat> is uh, 627. I know I quoted a different amount earlier on, but it depends on, there, there's other minor things that this, I'm pretty sure, is going to include those, um, the other liabilities that I said about compensated absences and everything. Because I took this from the DCED website, so I didn't have as much control over that. So you can see Plum Borough, you're going to, people may say, oh, wow, is that a mistake? Because they have 16. Yeah or 62 million in total debt outstanding. Um, when I looked further into that, they are guaranteeing 43 million of debt that's uh, uh, owned by their uh, municipal department, municipal authority. So they're, gar they're a guarantor on that. 43. So then if you take that 43 off the 62, they're, you know, we're all right in line with the amount of debt, but um, that's that one. Uh, blended expenditures, they're included in the 29.7 million, but you don't see them because they're spread throughout the departments. We had 1.2 million in municipal employee contributions, pension contributions, 
Lease pension contributions were $2.4 million. Our other post-employment benefits are, were $1.3 million this year. So that's total pension and OPEB, basically for, re, for retirees, is uh, $4.9 million, and that, that's about every year. All right, next we're going to talk about capital. It's one of our great <coughs> trucks. Okay. Um, I hope you can see that. It's, it, again, this one isn't uh, showing up quite the way I expected it to. But uh, our capital projects funds, audited revenues were 340000 Audit expenditures were $3.6 million. That left a deficit, well, actually, we, of $3.2 million, which we funded through transfers from the general fund, mm -hmm. which brought it down to $1.6 million mm -hmm. change in fund balance for the capital. So we, we um, going based. Going forward for 2019, what we expect to see, um, if you look at the expenditures, we're looking at 2.7 million because our road construction, as you recall, we bumped that up from the one million that we usually put, uh, do the transfer for. And so total road construction, we're expecting to be 1.9. Looking, you know, when you take that further down, <clears throat> I will add we had a grant in 2018, which I, I think we, I know we were approved for an, a grant that we talked about last last week, but uh, I don't know if that'll be in this year or next year. But the bottom line is, if going the same way as we did last year in 2018. We're looking at a deficit of our capital projects funds of 1.3 million. And this is basically what we spent the 3.3 million on. 2.1 <coughs> on road surfacing, um, radio communication equipment, 801,000. Um, and some other miscellaneous traffic signals and uh, public works truck and a street sweeper. All right, fund balance, there you go, savings. There's our little piggy bank. Mm -hmm. Mayor. Happy little chappy. Okay. Um, as we've been saying, our fund balance is growing we can maintain, we can control our operating expenditures somewhat, but we actually have no control over our capital outlay. We don't, roads in particular, you can't control those at all. So I've, um, this next one's a little hard to see, mm -hmm. but it's taking from 2013 <clears throat> to 2018. Our change in fund balance back in 2013 was a negative 1.4 million. So <clears throat> through working from 14 through 18, um, <coughs> our fund balance was built up over that time. So, excuse me, I, yeah, okay. So I put a little graph in for that also so you can see the five-year trend. Way off to the right is 2014. Um, if you recall, I mentioned about unassigned fund balance, which is what we can spend. Um, that's the red. The, the total fund balance is the blue. So you see how it's continuing to grow. Um, but with those kinds of expenditure, expenditures we're going to be having, it, we might not continue that growth. <clears throat> All right, long-term debt. 
again, we talked about earlier, uh, our current plan is to reduce debt as much as we can um, with um, the fund balance, especially in capital projects, being negative. You know, who knows? You gotta, we're going to have to finance them some way. Hopefully, we can get some grants. But uh, this was what I was saying about the additional liabilities, um, 839 in capital leases and 911,000 in compensated absences. Well, those are usually, those are vacation <coughs> sick time that employees accrue and then when they uh, retire or terminate employment. Some of it, well, I'll let Joe talk about that at another time, but some of that will get paid. That 911 is an accounting number based upon it if everything were to close up today, that's what we would owe. But that 911,000 will be paid out, you know, reasonably over the next whenever people retire. All right, and there's a picture of, not a picture, but a, uh, shows our debt that we're down now to 13.9, and we owe another 2.8 this year, which some of that we've already paid, probably all of it, I think. But, uh, cash position. <coughs> There's a lot of numbers there, but basically uh, the bottom line is our spendable cash. Um, when I'm talking spendable cash, we have all of those items in blue are really non-spendable for us because they're like uh, the bond account, that's not our money to spend. Liquid fuels account, they, you know, the state controls what we spend on that one. So um, from December of 17, we came down about a million in our uh, cash position. And then at June, Compared to June of 18, we're down about a million. So our, our, we're still very, very stable in our cash outlook, but you know it's less than it was last year. Budget update. Um, I put this in here because we had talked so much last year also about the uh, mercantile business privilege tax audits and um, just to see so you can see where we're at. Um, we're a little less under, a little under budget. Um, but you have to keep in mind that this is only year to date actual so we'll probably be over budget on those areas also. Um, budget of revenues have remained constant. We, minor things that we've done, we've sold vehicles that we no longer use. That gave us about 63000 Our interest earnings, Tim and I took some time last year um, and decided how to move some money so that we're earning better interest. And uh, as a result, we're 118% of budgeted interest so far this, this year. <coughs> Uh, expenditures are the I got to say the whole municipality is about 50 percent of where they should be I, I mean it of their budget which is where they should be at the end of June and there's our little cartoon ending and it's all I have just, uh, I, just to make a comment uh, council in the public. I'm not gonna sing it um, <laughs> Is, and I've mentioned before, staff's in the process right now putting together a new five-year capital improvement program, and um, and hopefully we'll get at least uh, a, a semblance of that to council, you know, before the end of the year. But as I've always done in council knows, I mean, our fund balance is good; it's very good. Um, but I always put a but there is, as Josie pointed out here, where <coughs> this time last year, June thirtieth. We're a million dollars less than we were. Um, fund balances can erode very quickly. 
and as a, a capital improvement program will will show um, that there's a lot of um, capital items that um, that we have to uh, start planning for. We need a new roof on this building, uh, and, there, and there's a lot of other. And we talk about the roads consistently. Um, so we're good, and I'm thankful for that. But we also have some work to do with respect to planning this out on how we are going to, you know, spend that money on the things we do need in this <coughs> municipality. Uh, infrastructure needs um, and vehicles, uh, paying down the debt, which is what we're doing. We'll have that paid off if we don't float any more bonds, which is what I recommend. Uh, we'll have that paid down in 2024. Um, so it's just a, uh, it's good, but it's also a word of caution because of the expenses uh, that are out there. So. Very good. Josie, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Josie. I'm going to open the floor for public comment on any municipal item. Once again, it's for, uh, for residents, taxpayers, and we please keep your comments to five minutes or less. Um, okay, Alyssa Beck again, Sustainable Monroeville. Um, on a positive note, I wanted to invite everybody to come to the Sustainable Monroeville booth at um, Monroeville Community Day. For the first time, we'll be having a booth there um, to educate the community about uh, sustainable uh, ideas uh, for maybe for the capital improvement plan um, and other things. And, and we'll be um, educating people, whoever comes to the booth, about other, other issues we're working with um, over the past yeah. 10 years of our existence. Um, I took what you said, Linda, to heart. You inspired me. Um, you said, come on, you know, do something positive here. So in collaboration with the League of Win Women Voters and Sustainable Monroeville, we're, we're going to be spearheading, and we're definitely not going to be the main leaders in this, but um, an initiative called Reimagine um, the Turtle Creek Watershed Communities. Um, and I'm just kind of publicly now planting a seed with council, with the mayor, uh, the municipal manager, and others on staff, um, inviting the municipality of Monroeville to participate. I have a, um, there are other communities that have spearheaded this effort to create sustainability and regenerative future options for communities. So this is, um, maybe you could take the camera to this, Reimagine Beaver. Um, it was presented to the community several months ago in Beaver, and I went up there and, and grabbed this. I'll have it for display on July 27th for anybody that wants to look at it. It's fantastic. Um, uh, the, the, thing, the other thing I really came here for is that um, I'm, I'm wondering about if we know yet what the gas line is going to be that's going underneath Route 22 um, near Cochrane if we have any information about that. It's the same gas. Was just the same gas line's been there for 30 years. It's been a new one. A replacement of an old gas line. Yeah, a replacement of an existing. Okay, so we, we are collaborating at this point with um, the organization, the nonprofit called Protect PT, and they put in a right to know. We realize now they only asked um, back to May of this year. My understanding is that if there's anything going on with gas lines, that there's something called Act 14, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it requires um, that, that municipalities be, um, I, I mean, I don't even know enough about it, but all I know is that um, there needs to be another right to know, if you don't know anything about what that gas line is about, um, uh, um, my understanding is that you would have received an Act 14 notice. So if you don't know about it, maybe we're, we're just trying to find out when you were really first advised about this um, renovation of a gas line. Um, so I just wanted to bring that forth. And um, the, the other thing is that was very disturbing, and I, I want to say it out loud, and I only speak publicly at this point because I do not feel comfortable um, doing otherwise because of experiences I have had with, with, um, with people here. Um, somebody from Protect PT called Mr. Sedlak today um, and was really not treated respectfully on the phone. I and disagree with you, and it's not right for you to say what I talked to her about. 
Yeah, well, that's it's a third. You're, you're talking as a third. Yeah, board. that's that's not appropriate. At this point. Okay, well, but if you would like to speak, if you have any problems with the staff, you talk to me. Call me on the. Okay, phone. I would I would say that um, it is very important that everybody from every municipal seat, every staff seat, dealing with the public in any capacity, be very aware of how they are um, monitoring or speaking. And um, I said it publicly because if I don't and if we don't, then we get shut down. So Mr. Little, with all due respect, I've known you for a very long time. Um, my husband has been a Rotarian uh, with you for a long time. We go to social events together. Um, I will not come to your office and address you. I will not speak on the phone with you without recording at this point. And I'm here to say that, um, that there is an issue here. Um, when a council person yells at the public and has to be settled by the mayor, um, I, I am just speaking that out loud. I am speaking the truth. And I will not be silenced. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address council? <coughs> My name is Robert Serafini. I have just one thing. In this past week, there I received the local newspaper. I don't know if anybody read it about the Port Authority looking for a new garage. I didn't see it either. It was just in a local. Did you see it? Yeah. They're looking for a new garage, and I it can't think. For, uh, property. Yeah, and I can't think of a better place than the school property, which is convenient to the Parkway. What a great idea. And I, has anybody ever looked into that yet? Well, that wouldn't be for us. It wouldn't be for us. That's for the school district. I mean, I just think someone should I look into that. I think she's hiding in the back. She you have a school board where you can speak to that meeting, Mr. Serafini. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I just thought that was a, a great way to get rid of the 26 acres, and I did, just wanted to bring that up tonight. Good idea. Great idea. And that would be a school board issue. That's their property, and they would have to say in all that. Anyone else like to address council at this point? <laughs> Sylvia Edwards back again. Okay, so on I guess behalf of like the Bel Air team, swim team family, uh, the community members that attend the pool, and uh, the staff at Monroeville Community Pool, I just want to say thank you for all of you guys for taking the opportunity to reflect on all the proposed options. And your vote representing our community happens in a moment, but I think it definitely impacts our community for years to come. So thank you for giving time a chance at allowing our community to implement a plan and give our Bel Air family to have some more time together. So thank you. Thank you. Like your shoes. Thank you. We've all had to wear that, Tom. We don't like them. It's hard to buy new shoes. I wore one for 12 weeks. Okay, I wore them for well. Four months. Yeah. There we go. Six, oh, Sixteen sure. weeks was not a good time. Welcome. If you could say your name for the record. Please. Valerie Warning, I am a Monroeville resident. I talked about before. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I'm here on behalf of Gateway School District and the Athletic Department. We really don't show our first responders and our military that much appreciation. So this year we have gotten together and on Friday, September 6th, we are going to honor our military and first responders of both Monroeville and Pitcairn to our football game with free attendance and a light refreshments prior to the game. So I'm just putting that out there because we're only seven weeks before our first kickoff of oh, the wow. school year That's and good. it's coming fast so yeah thank is. you for everything Val, that you guys do you're yes, saying sir. active duty military or veterans or veterans everyone that we do okay thank you thank you thank you, you. I'm just better. 21, but. I'm not 21 thank you. yet. anyone else would like to address <laughs> council on any municipal item Uh, Julio Estramera, Alpine Village. Um, again, I just wanted to, um, I'll keep it brief. Um, I know you mentioned the committee would go around and speak to the uh, private pools, uh, the other teams, um, Bel Air, swim team. But as the community pool, obviously it's a community pool. We don't necessarily have a leader. We're just a community that goes to the pool. And we'd, we request that um, some members of the community pool be involved in that process, you know, sure. whether, you know, a, a couple, you know, because we don't have a board, a president, you know, we obviously it's a municipal, so. We can coordinate that through the recreation department okay. um, and the manager of the pool, sure. you know, we can coordinate that way. Okay. 
Thank you. And and one last thing, I want to thank you all for uh, listening to to the Monroeville residents and, and the uh, people of the uh, community pool. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll leave the floor open. Pretty soon there'll be everybody there. <coughs> Sir, if you could just state your name for the record when you're done there. Uh, Richard Terrell, live in Garden City. Uh, I'm, besides a Monroeville resident for the last 16 years or so, I am currently the president of Garden City Swim Club. Uh, I think some or all of you have received a uh, solicitation for sponsorship for the Monroeville Invitational that we're hosting on Saturday. You should have also received at some point, probably via email, an invitation from our secretary to attend the meet. I'd love for you all to come out. It's all the Monroeville pools, including Bel Air, Haymaker, Gateway Heights, uh, Park, and Garden City. Um, and it's, although it's a big meet, it is uh, designed to be a fun meet. So the kids come and have a lot of fun. Um, and of course, we have a lot of good food. And um, just would love for you guys to come out if you can and uh, check things out um, and see what swimming in Monroeville is all about. Because even though it's not at Bel Air, um, it's part of that whole larger community. So that's this Saturday. The meet kicks off at 10 a.m. For is the first event, and we'll probably be going until we're usually going until between one and two. Uh, and there's a break in the middle for lunch. Uh, yeah. So um, already RSVP. I'm sorry. I already RSVP. Uh, yes, I know. This afternoon. Yes. I know. Um, and so you guys should have received. I know I sent it to Mr. Little and Mr. I Wilson. Um, a solicitation for an ad for our program. Um, it's obviously a little tight timing at this point, but we're also hosting the Division II Eastern Swim Association Championship meet as well at our pool, and we'll have a program for that. So even if you guys can't act on it now, you could act on it for that one as well. I know you guys uh, kicked in a sponsorship for Park for the mini meet. So when I saw that, I said, oh, well, we should ask too. I, I, I do have a question. Is it, yes. is it too late to uh, put an ad in, in your program or? No. Uh, we're going to press first thing Thursday morning. Okay. So, and I spoke to Dara in Mr. Little's office. She was very helpful. Um, I've already sent her a W-9 in case you guys decided to go ahead and do the sponsorship. Um, and uh, told her if you guys have a standard ad that you place in those kinds of things, if she can email it to me tomorrow, I'll definitely get it in the program no problem at all. Motion, Tom? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we do a full page ad in their uh, in your program. How much is that? Yeah. How much is What's that? The cost of that? Oh, one hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Second. Right. Second. Motion second. second. Third. Fourth. Questions or comments? Anything else? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gato. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Arsenko. Aye. Mr. Duncan. Aye. And Mr. Wilson. Aye. Thanks, yeah, guys. Have it. Really yeah. appreciate that. Oh, nice job. I'll be in touch with Thanks your office tomorrow, know. Mr. Little. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for coming over. Yeah. All right. Put that. I will leave the floor open. If there's anyone else who'd like to comment? Okay, we're going to close that part of the meeting. We're going to go to our uh, council reports. Mrs. Gatos, start with you this evening. Um, well, actually, my comments are going to be for um, Mr. Johns, who could not attend this evening. Um, and it was really, he wanted to thank everyone in the community that came out to enjoy the parade and the fireworks, as well as everyone that participated in the parade. Um, and uh, thank the committee, all the individuals. There's a lot of time and a lot of work involved in, in giving that to the, the members of our town. And uh, since he couldn't be here to say thank you to everyone, I'm saying it for him, as well as I also want to thank him for all the work that he put in to making it such a great event. And I've heard from numerous people that they think the fireworks were probably the best that we've ever had. And um, I think Mr. Johns kind of had suggested that to our fire display people. And I think we've kind of sewn them up for the next couple of years based on what Mr. Johns has done for us. So uh, thank you to him. I hope you all enjoyed your 4th of July and um, enjoy the rest of your summer, everyone. You. See you in August. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Poach. Yeah, a couple of quick things uh, that are ongoing. Um, I share Mr. Little's passion for the moon landing as well uh, from over the years. And there's also an event that's ongoing at the library on the 20th. There's a moon 
celebration of the moon landing is the rest of this this month going on all uh, all day on the 20th and the library's fun fest is on august the 24th i'm not sure we have that in our list of activities up till now um other than that now i'll pass it on to very good mr harvey yes uh <clears throat> since we were talking about the job mr johns did i i concur with the, the great organization of the parade and the fireworks a lot of people don't know how much work that takes and I know Mr. Johns is ending his term at the end of the year, and I hope he stays on as chairman of the fourth. Um, the second thing is uh, I wanted to thank Dom LaGorga. I, too, missed him last month. And uh, I remember when Dom started because I was in charge of the traffic unit, and I was actually teaching him red lights. That was like a joke. Um, he, he, he took off and... Uh, I don't have to tell you where he went because uh, he, he did such a tremendous job. But um, the other thing is, is I wanted to uh, send my condolences to the Frank family. Uh, Charlie Frank was a police officer who passed away. Uh, he was one of my training officers when I got hired. Uh, I'll never forget all the things that, uh, that he taught me as a police officer and as a friend. So my condolences to the Frank family. And... I am to the people that were here tonight, uh, rest assured that council, in my opinion, is trying to very hard to uh, settle this pool issue, which is very difficult. And uh, Mr. Poach and uh, myself and the rest of the committee will work hard to make this happen uh, with the best interest of the community. That's it. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Arasinko. Just wanted to say thanks for everybody coming out and speaking your voice. You know, when I sat where our mayor is, you know, I always believed in that. And uh, to Jimmy Johns, thank you for uh, the great job he did. And uh, enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. I have a uh, note from uh, the Senior Center. And... Um, it's the annual hot dog roast <coughs> on Wednesday, uh, August 7th, oh, starts at 12 p.m., and the menu will be beef, hot dogs, sauerkraut, baked beans, potato salad, and a Sunday bar. And then... Is Joe cooking? Joe, you cooking? I'm cooking. Oh, That's my. okay. <laughs> See, he's not that bad. Are you cooking? I'm grilling. But Joe's cooking. <laughs> and then entertainment... The will be Brother Rick and the Throwbacks. The Six Peats Ensemble will bring you back to the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And the uh, price will be $7 for a member, $8 for a guest, and the ticket deadline is July 31st. And Tara said thank you. And I have, uh, oh, Jimmy Johns and his whole committee. What a fabulous parade. I never saw so many people in attendance uh, watching the parade. I ran out of candy, like, uh, <laughs> probably at CVS. You shouldn't have been <laughs> eating it. You're probably, <laughs> you're probably too thrown through the yeah. <laughs> And uh, Well, I, I, I had a hard time keeping the guy in the car with me from eating <laughs> oh, I blame him. Uh, yeah, Poor Jim Macaluso, Jimmy Macaluso. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy's <not> here <laughs> the veteran. Anyway, uh, I want to say thank you uh, to uh, JJ and his uh, committee. Uh, you've done uh, a fabulous job. <coughs> and I have one more item that I'd like to make a motion. Last year, uh, we uh, paid $100 for a uh, T sign for the Coach Anna Marino golf outing. And I'd like to make a motion that uh, we do the same for this year. And um, anybody want to? We got a motion. Is there a second? Second. And this is for their their annual fundraiser. Yes, it's it's for the scholarship fund for Coach Anna Marino's uh, scholarship fund. Uh, yes, uh, for Gateway. Oh, it's for the to, golf outing for a T sign, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Hundred dollars. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Is the scholarships for uh, Gateway students? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Council, we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mr. Arsenko. Aye. 
Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Yes, the ayes have it. Very good. What happened to Mr. And that's, and that's all. Oh, well, well I, I do have one more thing. Uh, the passion that the folks uh, from the Bel Air pool uh, was very impressive. And uh, I just want to say thanks to the young people for coming out and uh, letting us know how they feel and uh, being a part of the community and able to talk to this body up here and make a great presentation. Thank you. Very good. And Mr. Wilson, I'll echo your, your comments there as well. You know, we uh, thank you to everyone that got up and spoke um, and gave their input. I mean, these decisions are never easy, and uh, we do rely on the residents to, to make these decisions. Certainly, there's a lot of things that we have to, you know, go through, but we, uh, we really uh, do appreciate the input, and it really helps the decision-making. The... Uh, I'm going to echo a lot of these, uh, these items because the 4th of July parade was great. We really appreciate everyone that was involved, everyone that came out. We had a really nice crowd despite the heat. Uh, a big thanks to Mr. Johns and the committee. They do put a lot of work into this, and it was a great event. It really, uh, really uh, showcased Monroeville very well. We had a really nice turnout, and it was a great day for it, and we always look forward to it every year. And um, Mr. Johns, yeah, he's not here, so we could maybe – a vote to have him be we can. The chairman we can draft next him, yeah. year. Oh, I'll make a motion. Yeah. Yeah. Second that motion. Or we'll railroad him. He's not here. That's right. <laughs> he does a great job with it. He enjoys it. So we appreciate that. But a big thanks to him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Josie, nice job with your presentation. Oh, yes. And Absolutely. your staff yeah. as well. Great job. It's a lot of hard work. And really put it all together there well and really explain it to everybody. And uh, it's a very in-depth document. Like you, like you mentioned, the CAFR, which really goes over everything, all of our finances. It's online. It's on our website. The previous years are on there. I think we go back maybe three years or so Thanks. on there. But they're very in-depth documents. It explains where all the money is. So, but nice job this evening. Thank you. And uh, the Westmoreland Heritage Trail, which currently runs through Monroeville, uh, from Salzburg through Murraysville, through Monroeville to Trafford. Eventually, the long-term goal is to connect to the Great Allegheny Passage. It is something that we're actively working on with the county. But the Westmoreland Heritage Trail folks, they are looking for volunteers uh, to, be, to get involved with the trail and to help out, whether it's with trail maintenance or to be involved with the board or in any capacity that you're interested in. So if anyone is interested, uh, please get a hold of me, and then I can get you in front of the right, uh, the right people for that. You can either call my, uh, my municipal phone number or email me and uh, let me know if you're interested. But it's a, a great, uh, tremendous asset for the community, and we want to keep expanding that trail. And then uh, lastly, uh, a special thanks to uh, Mr. Harvey, actually. Uh, Mr. Harvey, and uh, with the help of uh, Forbes Hospital, was able to uh, have a helicopter land at the uh, J&R uh, day camp off of Rosecrest Drive. That's the JCC. They have hundreds and hundreds of kids back there. It was a really great learning experience for those kids, and uh, they really appreciated it. And uh, you know, special thanks to Mr. Harvey for uh, making that happen. So nice job, Ron. Thank you. And with that, I will uh, seek a motion, motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is the laugh a vote? Because that's yes. all she does. The ayes have it. Thank you and good night. Are there snakes on the